Hi third graders, are you ready for chapter 20? Can you believe that we're gonna finish the book this week? If you haven't been listening, go ahead and go back and make sure that you listen to the chapters leading up to this because they're really good. And with the movie coming out soon, it's gonna be fun to see how they're the same and different. All right, here we go, chapter 20. Chapter 20, A Way Out. Mary stared at Mrs. Medlock in horror. School? No, I'm not ready. I can't go. You have no say in it, child, Mrs. Medlock said, her eyes glinting victoriously. It's all arranged. It's a school that is full of the right sort of people and the right sort of discipline. Mary saw her uncle walk by below. She flew down the stairs. Uncle, no, she appealed. Oh, no, you don't, gasped Mrs. Medlock, hastening after her. You leave your uncle alone. Uncle! Mr. Craven, sir, please don't send me away. Please, I need to be here, Mary begged. Her uncle carried on walking without even looking at her. Fury burst through Mary. Blinded by rage, she grabbed his arm. Colin doesn't have a hump, she shouted. Why do you keep telling him he does? What are you talking about? Her uncle snapped, shaking her off. Colin, he doesn't have a hump and you know it. She took in the astonishment on his face and suddenly realized something. But of course, she breathed. You haven't even seen his back, have you? You don't visit him enough to know that it's what he's actually like. When Colin was younger, the physician said that he believed he would develop a hump like mine unless Colin had medicine and followed his orders, Mr. Craven said stiffly. I have done as he recommended. I do not want my son to suffer as I have suffered. His body is weak. But not because he has a hump, Mary exclaimed. Suddenly she saw the chance to make things better for Colin. It's only because he's shut up and he made to, he's made to believe that he's an invalid and never gets up to use his legs. You can change that, Mary said passionately. He isn't dying, please, you've got to believe me. A puffing Mrs. Medlock had now reached Mary and she tried to pull her away. Stop with your talking or this is going to get much worse. But Mary fought her off. She had to make her uncle understand. This isn't what Aunt Grace would have wanted for Colin, she cried out passionately. Don't you see, uncle? This isn't what she would have wanted for either of you. Mr. Craven erupted. Silence, child. You know nothing of my wife. I'm sorry, sir, Mrs. Medlock gasped. I shall see that she is punished. Mary stamped her foot, desperate to make them understand. I know that she wouldn't have stood outside his door while he cried at night. I know she loved the outdoors and wouldn't have wanted Colin to be shut up inside and told that he has a hump on his back when he doesn't have one. Can't you see what you're doing? This house has become a prison for both of you. Her uncle gazed at her for a long moment and then strode away. I'm sorry, sir. She leaves tomorrow, Mrs. Medlock called after him desperately. Good, Mr. Craven snapped without glancing back. Mary was marched to her room by Mrs. Medlock and pushed roughly inside. Forgetting the vow she had made all those months ago never to cry again, she wore her out, herself out, sobbing. She didn't think she could bear to be sent away to school, to leave her friends and the secret garden. She cried herself to sleep and woke up in the middle of the night. As she opened her eyes, everything came flooding back and a steely determination now filled her. They could try to send her away if they wanted but they would have to find her first. She left her bedroom and began creeping downstairs. Her uncle's study door was open. There was a light shining out. Mary stole a quick look inside. Archibald was sitting in the leather chair at a table beside the window. What was her uncle doing? On the table was a bottle of whiskey and in one hand, he had a half filled glass. In the other, he held a photograph that was framed it was the one that she had seen in his study before. Aunt Grace was in the front of the picture. She was sitting on the grass and Colin was looking over her shoulder. <coughs> oh, excuse me. He had his little arms around her neck. They were both smiling at the person who was holding the camera. Mary saw her uncle dash his hand across the face. What have I done? He muttered to himself. Oh, Grace, what have I done? She swallowed, and then she was about to creep past when there was a fizzle, and the light suddenly went out. Mary froze and waited for her eyes to adjust. 
Using the light from the moon, her uncle fumbled with a candle and some matches. He burned his hand as he tried to light it and exclaimed angrily as the match went out. He tried again, striking another match and throwing it down when it burned out. Desperately hoping that she wouldn't trip over anything or bump into anything, Mary hurried past and ran down the main staircase. She grabbed her warmest coat and boots from the cloakroom and then scurried out the back door. As the cold night air hit her face, she felt both relieved and scared. She'd done it though, she'd escaped. Mary slept that night in the secret temple with Hector beside her. She woke feeling hungry as the sun rose. Dickon came through the gate and he was whistling. He stopped in surprise when he saw there sitting on the steps with Hector, watching the early morning sunrise, its rays falling on the perfect sea of flowers that had now bloomed around the temple and the statues. The weeds had been conquered and the flowers had opened to the sun. Clumps of white lily of the valley were nodding with the bluebells that were clustered in the shady areas with tall pink foxgloves behind them. Hydrangea bushes covered with enormous lilac and pink blossoms that looked like pom-poms spilled from the borders along the clouds of the white orange blossom and yellow hypersium. Mary, what are you doing here? Dickon asked. They're going to send me to some school today, she said gloomily, but I'm not gonna go. I won't, Dickon, he nodded, understanding. Colin will be wondering where I am, Mary said anxiously. Can you go to him? Get Martha to help you, and could you bring him here? She watched as he left the garden. What would everybody be doing at the house? Well, she realized that they would know she was gone by now. What would they be saying? A feeling of satisfaction that she had outwitted Mrs. Medlock filled her though. It warmed her and made her forget about her cold fingers and toes. As the sun rose higher, she felt its warmth sinking into her skin. She went to the stream to get some water. When she came back, she saw Dickon pushing Colin in his chair. Both boys were looking excited and flushed. We had such a near miss, Mary, Colin called. Mrs. Medlock almost caught Dickon in my room. He had to hide in my wardrobe. When she left, he had to push me as fast as he could. I thought he was gonna bounce me clean out of my chair. His eyes flew to her face. What's going on? Dickon said you had to run away. She ran over to him. I have run away. I can't go to school, Colin. I just can't. She looked around the garden and I don't need to. A plan had formed in her mind overnight. I'm gonna stay here. She saw his doubtful look and rushed on. I'm gonna be happy. You two could bring me food and clothes and blankets too. Colin shook his head. I know you don't want to school and we don't want you to go either, he said slowly. He's right, we don't, Dickon put in. Mary was grateful as she saw the warm friendship in her, their eyes, but you can't stay locked up in this garden, Colin went on, pushing himself out of the chair and standing on his shaky leg. It's as bad as me being locked in my room. Life needs to be lived says the boy who's seen none of it, retorted Mary. Says the girl, so determined that no one loves her that she will make it so, Colin exclaimed. She scowled at him. You don't understand. If I go to school, they won't like me like you do. I will go back to being alone, just like I used to be, and I don't think I can bear it again. Her, vi her voice rose. I like it here too much. I like this. She swept her arm around, and I really like both of you. Hector interrupted them by barking frantically. Mary frowned. What was he doing? They all turned. In the distance from the direction of the house, they could see smoke rising into the sky. That smoke, said Colin, his expression turning to alarm. Is that normal? No, said Dickon anxiously. It's coming from the house. There must be a fire, gasped Mary. Father, Colin cried. Martha! said Dickon in fear. Mary didn't hesitate. She sprinted toward the gate and Dickon followed. Colin took a few hobbling steps after him. Mary glanced back and saw the frustration and the defeat in his face. I can't, he shouted, but you, you guys go.